Here, here's what we're learning at this at this moment uh, in terms of these margin calls that cause all these ripple effects. Uh, we're learning how we're learning how some of the banks um, uh, helped Bill Wang. Uh, make all these large leverage bets less than a decade after uh, he was uh, punished for his part in the insider in the insider trading scheme. Uh, by the time Amira and Credit Suisse announced yesterday that they had faced losses that could be uh, highly significant, Goldman and Morgan, as Joe and Becky were just mentioning, had already finished unloading their positions. Uh, but in terms of how this happens, it's a little more complicated than, than, a, than a bank just turning around and saying, were out. What was happening last week was you saw some of the big Chinese names that, that Bill Wang had been in uh, falling, falling precipitously. By midweek, you had the Viacom situation, which was also something they owned, and obviously Discovery as well. Now, it was at that point that the bank started to call and make margin, um, uh, make margin calls, effectively saying, can, can, you, can you come up with the money? It was less clear as the week went on that they could come up with the money. Uh, and yes, as Joe just said, they were saying, please give us more time. Now, interestingly, interestingly, some of the banks, including Goldman, contractually have to give their clients time. In fact, they had what was called a margin account, and that meant that they would have to get a 20, 24 hours notice, effectively, uh, to, quote, cure the problem. That's what would happen. They'd have to cure the problem. Um, however, Morgan Stanley and Credit Suisse the way their accounts are set up are different. They can actually almost unilaterally um, call a default, if you will. Now, the second a bank calls a default on an Archegos, it creates a cross default, if you will, for all the banks. And so that then, effectively, the stampede begins, and that's what happens. So you had uh, banks like Goldman Sachs and others who wanted to get out, who couldn't, effectively, or couldn't press the button to say go. They actually had to wait for Credit Suisse and Morgan Stanley to go first, um, which raises some questions about why Credit Suisse, since they were one of the first to go uh, or to get out, effectively to, to call the default, didn't get out of more of these names themselves uh, as fast as Goldman and Morgan uh, appeared to have. We'll see. But uh, Go Goldman and Morgan it, had to have been bracing for this and be prepared for it and be, just been ready to move a lot faster, which is, you know, something Goldman is well, known it, for. Well, it appears that Goldman, decades, was, Goldman was fleet. waiting to do this. They wanted to. Uh, and yeah. Morgan Stanley, I, but, I think, I, I, you know, interestingly, you look at who was running those banks and also their role in the financial crisis. Um, and I'm thinking of James now, Morgan Stanley, who's seen the crisis. David saw the crisis. Yep. Um, and I think that if you look at some of the names who were running Goldman. some of the other firms at the time, I mean, Credit Suisse now and some of the others, I, I'm not going to make judgments about, about risk management. But nonetheless, I, I think they were all on it, so to speak, but not clearly on it enough uh, in terms of what Credit Suisse and Nomuro are now uh, dealing with. But they were all, they'd also had potentially even bigger loans outstanding, so it might have been harder for them to get out uh, as quickly. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.